Hello friends, today we are going to chat about becoming a read aloud mama. I love talking about reading aloud to my children because it's something we have always done and it's natural and it's gentle and it's full of family bonding building time. It's full of excellent learning and great conversations. Also, today's video is sponsored by Spanish for You, which is a simple, effective, and affordable foreign language option for homeschoolers. They also have packages available for co-ops if you're teaching or if you're interested in having Spanish taught in your homeschool co-op. They have some different options there. They are offering us two coupon codes. One is for free shipping during the month of May. That coupon code is May Ship Free. You just enter that at checkout and you get free shipping. They also offer several Spanish songs for Spanish learning. So all you need to do if you have an order over $12.95 or more, you just enter the coupon code SINGMAY, all in one word, and that'll get you a free Spanish song at checkout. So we'll get back to Spanish for you here a little bit later in this video. I'm talking mainly about read-alouds today, but of course I know, you know how these chats go. I will dip my toes into many homeschooling and homeschool mom topics, so here we go. I wrote you guys a novel over on largefamilytable.com called Becoming a Homeschool Read Aloud Mama, and it just shares my journey. Way back in the olden days when I was a mom of two small little boys and I knew we were going to homeschool and I was researching different styles and methods, and in one aspect I kept reading about and just falling in love with the idea was these wonderful stories of moms surrounded by you know one child or ten children and just reading for hours and hours on end and the learning that naturally took place and the conversations that came out of that and the bonds that were formed it just seemed like a wonderful style that I felt would work really well for us. I've always been an avid reader, and of course I'm um, an Anne Voskamp in my heart, although, <laughs> although far from her. Also was a natural progression from what I already did with my little boys, which was we read storybooks all the time. You know, children love to snuggle up with mama or to be really close with mama and hear great stories. You know, children all the time will bring a parent a book and want to be read to and if that's encouraged it can foster a love of reading and you know if we're all reading we can learn about anything in the entire world so when my boys were very very young we did our weekly trips to the city library and I would let them pick out stacks of children's books on anything they wanted and then every day we would have a big reading time based Based on the books they picked out. Now, our youngest at that time, you know, he was one and a half, two, two and a half or so, but he naturally picked out a lot of Thomas books. And then Jaden was a little older. He naturally would pick out a lot of books on, you know, nature studies and tigers and bats and bears and volcanoes and, you know, anything with the cool cover in the children's department. An erupting volcano would find its way into our stack. And so then at reading time it was a lot of fun they could just pick out a selection or two or four based on the books that they got to pick out themselves at the library and it made it a very fun time this is how our read aloud time started gentle with two little boys was encouraged by our weekly trips to the library and having a nice read aloud time every day it wouldn't necessarily be every afternoon or every morning or at bedtime it would just be whenever we could find those pockets of time and i would just read to them as long as i possibly could and that was mainly with children's storybooks so then as i knew that we were going to move into our homeschooling journey and we had decided we were going to homeschool our children at that time we had two children we were going to homeschool whether we had one child or 12 children we just really thought it would be a good fit for what our goals were for our family so with the read aloud time once Jaden got to be closer to five years old and we were moving into you know officially homeschooling even though we had already been doing it for years, I started to read him just 
maybe half a chapter or a whole chapter as far as we could get during Zion, little Zion boy, during his nap time. Jaden and I started to move into doing longer chapter books. I will give you several excellent recommendations on where you can start with good ch children's literature in chapter book form. A lot of those also will have a picture, you know, every couple pages, which is always nice, especially as they're getting used to listening to the longer stories that don't necessarily have a picture on every single page. Still read children's story books with the pictures for as long as possible, but then we moved into longer books. Over on largefamilytable.com, I have a, again, a whole novel on our journey in developing a read aloud time as a family, how we started, how we added another child to our read aloud time as they graduated from nap time and came over into read aloud time and were doing more homeschooly educational things on purpose every day. I do share more about that. Today what I wanted to do is I, I get several questions about read aloud time and so I just wanted to go through a couple of the common questions that I have received on Instagram and Facebook and questions that come up often whenever I'm sharing pictures of books we're reading or the kids in the forest and I'm reading to them or, or little video clips here and there and I mention our read aloud time. Obviously you guys don't want me to set the camera up and record all three hours of it unless I could fast forward that into 20 seconds I guess but I'll give you the but I'll answer questions and get to the mechanics of how that works for us. Again some of these questions are from Instagram some are from Facebook this one let me see here this question is from a mom on Facebook and she asked how can you read a how can you read loud enough for all your kids to hear? I can talk loud, she said loud in all caps, but still struggle with reading outside unless the kids are sitting still and quiet. Reading while they're playing sounds like so much fun. So again, I share more of these details over on, over on largefamilytable.com and that post will be linked below. But our read aloud time, way back at the beginning, and, and even the, to this day, if we're inside, children can have their Legos that they can do quietly. They can do, you know, Naomi does a lot of bracelets and some sewing. They can also do craft projects. I have a big box of crayons. We have markers and paper and stencils. Stencils have been popular here lately. They can get those out and they can do those quietly while I read. Now what the big key here, in my world at least, that helps facilitate read aloud time, and it changes. But with our family, we, we have always worked best if we get outside, burn some energy first. Then it's more natural for us to, to come back in, to get you know cleaned up if we need to, to have lunch, and then we transition into either a long read aloud time and then our table work, or we'll do what I call our table work first and then a longer read aloud time. Now obviously that is not the pattern for my high school level sons. Usually, whenever we come back inside, they have huge work stacks. They have, they have been read to for so many years. They are on to devouring their own stack of books, and we have great conversations about those books. We also listen to audiobooks as a family, but they are not, you know, right there. I always say, people say, why aren't your older boys in your videos? Well, I go back to my saying of, you know, they don't live up my armpit like the younger children did. They had lots of time doing that, but now, you know, they're, they're reading, they would be more interested in reading a Bonhoeffer novel than sitting there and listening to Little House on the Prairie for the sixth time. It's just different ages and stages. So, as as far as my elementary kids though, we do well getting in that time in the afternoon. Now within our read aloud time, you can cover a lot of history, a lot of science, a ton of geography. You can cover so many subjects in your read aloud time. People ask me what curriculum I use. I use an eclectic mix. We have a ton of books. I adopt all the books. <laughs> uh, you know, if we're at the thrift store, if we're at a used book sale, we have just been working to build a family library over the years. If you want a literature-based curriculum that comes in a box 
that has everything laid out for you. There are several of those out there, and I have bought those used in the past. And then, of course, I end up taking them apart and reworking them to fit our family. And so I just find it best if I do it myself. And then I have different curriculums that I like to mix in within our core learning time as far as for math and handwriting and such. In the post linked below, I'll link you to my article I did earlier this year, and I think I did a video about it too, where I go through what we're using for this year and what our goals are. I won't revisit all of that during this video today because I'm trying to just focus on reading, right? So back to how can I be loud enough for my children to hear me if they've had a good exercise time and if we're inside. Their legs have run enough, they've got all the wiggles and giggles out, and they it's a break to sit and to do a quiet activity and to listen. Also for reading inside, that's just naturally a good nap time for Daniel. Now, the way that our family has naturally gone over the years, especially in the last year that we've moved to this property, and we did read alouds outside at our other house, a tire swing tree or by the pond, but it seems like living here in the wilderness, we naturally are getting in a lot of read aloud time outside. So we have a shade garden with Anirondack chairs. You know, it's just natural and comfortable for the kids to sit around there, and especially third trimester of pregnancy, for me to sit there and I can read to them. And they have rocks that they build with, and they have sticks they do creations with, and they do have some toys. You know the toys, they can't be battery power toys that are gonna start you know, ringing and dinging while I'm reading. But they could certainly have, like Naomi likes the, the little pet shop toys. And we have some outside, like mud toys as I call them. They are more than welcome to do anything, again, that they can do quietly. They also like to paint in the shade garden, and that's a good opportunity for me to sit and read to them while they paint. One of our favorite places to also read is in our forest. We have, we call it the first bridge, but we have these bridges over our one of our mountain streams there. And I have chairs set up there. We have a lot of natural sand. We have sticks and rocks. And of course, they have toys that they keep out there. So by the time we go to do reading, you know, it's a lot of fun for us to pack our lunch and to go on out and then I sit and the kids eat and then they know because we've been doing it for a while and these are all habits that we've worked on and have encouraged they know that you know again Naomi with her pet shop she'll build a little town for them Liam works on building various dams Gabriel likes to build log log houses or boats Amelia putters between them all and honestly you know she's four she would still take a nap but she'll lay down in the hammock and listen often. And then something that I would not plan or even have as a goal is Daniel is only two and a half. And if we're going out to the first bridge, a lot of times, because you know he works so hard to keep up with those brothers and sisters, he'll just sit and putter right along with them. And just naturally in his personality, I've had some kids this would not have worked with, but he follows suit and he's he hangs right out with us. Now, of course, I'm not asking him comprehension questions or anything like that. My goal would be that he would just remember sitting around mama in the forest, listening to great stories, even if he doesn't remember the stories exactly. At two and a half, it's just all about building family time and memories together. So the full answer that I gave that mom in reference to volume, I said, it usually takes a few minutes for the kids to get adjusted to the fact that I'm reading. And of course, sometimes we have interruptions, but I continue to gently work through it and lead them into the fact that I'm reading to them while they quietly play. We got five chapters done this afternoon afternoon. They get lots of loud playtime, of course, at other times. So the big event is they can play quietly while I read to them situations like this. And that was off of, I just took a screenshot on my phone, off of um, one of the recent pictures that I shared of the kids just playing in the sand around me listening to them and listening to me read to them. I would never bring the kids out, you know, 9 a.m. in the morning and expect them all to sit there and quietly build little log houses in the sand and listen to me read five chapters. But by noon, that's a perfectly obtainable goal. And of course, in the winter time, we still get out heavy in the mornings. We just bundle up for our outside time and and then the read aloud time happens inside. I think also why we have always, we have naturally gravitated towards more 
afternoon reading and afternoon homeschool time is that, you know, every couple years for the last almost 19 years that Travis and I have been married, every couple years we have a new baby. Being a growing family and then now on the larger family side of things, it just has never worked where I can get all the multiple ages and stages and levels all quiet and ready, you know, first thing in the morning. So that's how that works for us. And that's again, part of that homeschooling freedom that you can make it work for you and whatever the needs of your family are. And then another mom asked, she said, what does your read aloud time look like? Do little ones stay focused and quiet long enough? Trying to figure out how to do more read aloud time in our daytime hours. Younger ages, I'm not requiring a lot. You know, again, if we're inside, Daniel's napping, there are plenty of times where he's tired he won't sit out in the shade garden with us during our afternoon read aloud time. He'll be inside and he'll take his nap during that time. It just depends on the day. Just stating that I know he's in a lot of the recent pictures and it has been part of what has happened lately but again at two and a half I would say if your younger ones are napping and you can read to your non-napping children that would be ideal. It just takes some dedicated time to work on building the habit and to help make Make reading aloud become part of the natural family rhythm like we feel weird and off if we have a few days where because life has gotten busy or we've had a lot of errands or whatever where we haven't been able to read it's just a very natural part of our family atmosphere now is reading wonderful books together another mom asked if we listen to the audio version of a book and if we also follow up with a movie and so yes we will if there's an ex if there's a movie out and it goes along with our current reading um, it's lovely when we can find the exact story like when we read the BFG this fall and then right on time we were able to watch the BFG movie and compare and contrast the differences between the chapter book version and between the movie and that is always a lot of fun you can do that with so many movies you can also find movies based on the historical context of the movie so I know we've we've enjoyed watching on Adam series that came out many years ago and so during all of our Revolutionary War reading we never read a particular book just on John Adams. However, because we have read so much about the Revolutionary War and about other historical figures during that time, it was natural to watch a movie that dealt with Boston Tea Party and Benjamin Franklin and the Declaration of Independence and the different struggles and challenges that were going on during that time. And another mom asked, how much of the book do your kids get? I mean, while they're playing outside, etc., do they get distracted? So this goes along with a lot of what I've already shared, but again, moms wanna know and it's a great question to ask. And that still goes back to my answer, where I'm not reading during a play free for all time. Can you repeat this with me? You know, kids have been exercised, It's later in the day and they are ready for some downtime. So me reading to them is very welcomed and and it's something we all enjoy. I enjoy sitting and reading to them for several hours. Now along with that you can naturally do comprehension questions. They don't have to be pre-written or anything complicated. I mean I am there reading the chapter I fully understand what just happened. So let's say the next day we can just think up a question or two for each child and we kind of go around and I can ask them a question. I can say, Amelia, since Amelia is involved in a lot of our reading, but again, she has a lot of older kids as examples. I can say, Amelia, what did Ma and Pa get for Laura and Mary and baby Carrie for Christmas yesterday? What were some of the presents that they unwrapped? And, and she can say they got red and white candy, or they got a new ribbon, or they got a hairpin, whatever those particular details would be, more often than not, she can pull those details back up. That tells me she's listening. So, and this is something I've just had to work on training the children. And again, if it's a time, if we've had a season where we haven't been heavy in our read-alouds, these are all things I have to remind them. So, you know, it's just good to remember, we're, I'm not a robot, you're not a robot, my kids aren't robots, and I need to remember things too. 
So if we're getting back into the habit again, I will need to let them know. Now, I know you'll have questions. There may be some things you don't understand. So remember, I'm going to stop every few pages and then you can all take turns asking me whatever you would like. And that may be, especially if you're reading a book that's based on a different time period, they may be dealing with things that are described fairly well in the book, but I may need to add some more detail. Like let's say it's a book and they're describing seeing the wax and dripping it on paper and adding in the metal seal and basically the old-fashioned way to seal a letter. And that could spark a lot of additional conversation. And so that might be a question that come up. And we dive into that. Another example would be, I look at Liam and say, you know, Liam, yesterday an old yeller, what was it that Arliss and old yeller kept swimming in? Laugh and say, oh, they kept, they were swimming naked in the drinking water again. You know, so, so I know the kids are engaged and actively listening because they ask me questions and they can answer my questions. And I don't feel I need a list of pre-written questions to gauge their comprehension. I know because I'm actively involved in the process with them if they're really latching onto the story or not. And so that's something you can do no matter the ages and stages of your kiddos. You know, if they're young, if they're four, if they're six, if you're just getting started in, in doing an active reading time most days, even if it's a picture storybook, you can ask them questions about the book and have them answer you. And you don't want it to feel rigid or stressed or pressured. You want it to be very gentle, very natural, and you want them to enjoy having that conversation with you. So I'll jump into a few additional questions I received on Instagram and Facebook in particular about being a, a homeschool read aloud mama and also give you just several great books that you could use as a starting point to, to jump on into great reading with your kiddos. And so I I want to thank Spanish for You for sponsoring today's video and I'm going to share some of the highlights of the curriculum with you. Spanish for You is a homeschool Spanish program designed and developed by a homeschool co-op teacher who designed a way to make learning a second language fun and effective for various types of learners. In Spanish for You, students do not complete levels, they complete themes, and they press based on how many themes they complete. Spanish for You is very large family friendly because when you purchase it, you are able to use the adaptable lessons to teach various ages and grade levels over an entire year. You also, the little birdie is agreeing, you also do not need to already know Spanish yourself in order to use this with your children. You can learn right along with them. Some of the features that I like so offer audio of the entire curriculum and songs based on the theme that your family is currently doing together. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is always so helpful whenever you're trying something new with your kiddos, just to make sure it works for you. Now, in the description below, I have links directly to the Spanish For You site, and you can watch videos on the program, and you can look through all their theme packages. There may be a particular theme package that goes along with something your family is talking a lot about right now or other studies and you might be able to just mix it all in very naturally and gently so it works well for your household. You're able to do lessons at your own gentle pace. You just open the book and you do lesson one, week one, lesson two, and so on like that. If you want to take a break for a summer vacation, if you want to do Spanish through the summer because you're homeschooling year-round, you can really make it work for you. If you want to teach this in your co-op or if you know someone who's going to lead Spanish in your homeschool co-op, they have special co-op pricing and I'll have all that information linked below. And don't forget to use those special coupon codes. If you order in May, you can use the May Ship Free coupon code to get free shipping this month. And if you want to try one of their Spanish songs, if you have an order of $12.95 or more, just enter the coupon code SINGMAY and you'll get one of their songs for free along with your order. So another mom had sent me a question. She was concerned about not being consistent enough with read aloud time or getting halfway through a book and then life derailing their read aloud plans. And so here is what I wrote back to her. I said, we just pick up where we left off and act like nothing ever happened. The other day we buckled down and finished the last seven or so chapters in one sitting. 
It was a great book. We just had a lot of road trip time and that kept us from being consistent. Some days we just did one chapter, which you know in some books is only about two pages. It just depends on what book we were dealing with. I'm sh I think at the time I was discussing James and the Giant Peach or um, another title such as that. So anyway, if you have, you know, a week or two weeks where just so many things come up and you don't get to that consistent read aloud time, which is your mama heart every day, I just pick up the book and I start where we left off. Now sometimes I might go back and read the last chapter, but you know what happens often is I hear the whole chorus of, we read this already. You know, we, we read this chapter already, mom, do the next one. And so that just shows, even if we get derailed by real life sometimes, all the time, um, they were listening, they know. We read that already, please continue forward. And in those cases, I do like to go back and read at least the, the last paragraph we had read the day before and so you don't always have to do that and even then I will hear a lot of we read that already we read that yesterday we read that a few days ago um, and that's fine it's it's in their mind it's in their hearts and so just give a little brief overview and then keep trucking along so that's how uh, that's my life advice for many situations is just jump back in, pretend like nothing ever happened, and keep moving forward and doing the next thing. So another question I've got, I've received often in various forms is just moms wanting to know what are some good books to start with. I suggest letting them get any books they're interested in and reading to them. Add at your local library, there should be an excellent selection of children's literature, just chapter type books that you can check out and start there. You can also start by picking a particular topic. You know, way back when, when Jaden was five and he was, and he wanted to learn all the bat things, we picked out all the books we possibly could on bats and we built a bat house and we went to we actually have a bat cave it's a caverns that has local bats that live in it we observed bats you know, we'd watch for them in the evenings especially after we mowed the grass if the bats would come to eat the bugs that were stirred up and and then what you're actually doing is you're developing gentle unit studies based on the interest of your child some people call that delight directed learning there's all kinds of key phrases we can throw around here but you can start with something as simple as going to the library and reading whatever books they pick out. They get to pick and you get to read them and you guys get to learn about all kinds of things together. Then as you continue to move into more chapter book form, this is just a stack that I had. We, we don't have all our book boxes unpacked yet. I probably have 12 or 15 boxes of books in our garage still, projects, projects, but I have some of our favorites unpacked and then I have other books I've added through this past year. And I did find, I'm happy to report, let me show you this. This is, now we've had this, it's loved. I don't think it, ha it doesn't have a cover anymore. But this Dr. Seuss edition, it's Dr. Seuss, your favorite Seuss. And it goes through, I believe it has maybe a baker's dozen, 13, yeah, 13 stories by Dr. Seuss. Has many of our favorites in here. And I have just read this and reread this to so many children over the years. And that's so helpful because then whenever they begin their season of reading and practicing reading, it's natural for them to work with Green Eggs and Ham and the Cat in the Hat and the Lorax and those stories. I have several children reading me Dr. Seuss every day right now. So I'm just gonna sit here and hold this collection of chapter books. Um, so I would suggest if you are just starting out like how I was with the five, five to six year old age range, I would suggest to find or things like the E.B. White classics, those should all be available at your library. That's Charlotte's Web, Stuart Little, The Trumpet of the Swan. I've read those books so many times over the years. But they do have pictures usually every few pages, which is helpful. It's also very easy and fun to have the kids do their own creations based on those stories. And there's several movies that go along with a lot of those. I think with The Trumpet of the Swan, there are some cartoon versions out there. And I think it hasn't been updated in many years, but definitely for Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little, of course. Now, what's fun, especially with Stuart Little, is they changed things in the more, like, last two decade versions of the movies. I was just thinking, oh, I guess those Stuart Little movies aren't new anymore. But there are some differences between the original story 
and the movies and so that's always fun to read the book and compare with the movies. There's also Old Yeller and there's the Shiloh stories. All the Raw Doll classics that I've mentioned several times. I love Despero. That one is always a great read and that's another one that has a movie that goes along with it. Any of those classic children's read alouds that also have animals in them. I think is a great place to start because that really pulls kids in and there's a lot of different directions you can go from there. Again, in the article that I'll have linked below, I'll have some reading lists and suggestions linked for you because I know it's always helpful. And of Green Gables series, there's also the entire Narnia collection. And even once your children are reading chapter books on their own, they still have a lot of fun and enjoyment in them listening to you read. The Secret Garden is another excellent read to go through. And then also, you know, don't forget about the classic, very, you know, older stories stories such as Heidi and the Alice in Wonderland series. I believe it's properly called Alice Through the Looking Glass. Peter Pan, the Swiss Family Robinsons. You can get the illustrated classic versions. I'm sorry, I don't have one here in my hand, but those are chapter books. The print is a little larger and there's some pictures that go along with it. And those are really good for your kids when they're crossing over from reading children's type picture books to reading their own chapter books, those illustrated classics. I know we've done several of those. I believe we have them on Betsy Ross and Clara Barton and several historical figures. And I know we have it on the with the Jungle Book too. And the Jungle Book is a good one to read. So I wish I had my bookshelf here in front of me. Gulliver's Travels and A Little Princess. I'm just throwing ideas out there for you guys. Then the entire The Wind in the Willows series. Also the Boxcar Children. We, I can see that we're going to go through a Boxcar Children phase again here soon and we have a lot of that collection. And there's actually that whole series that's out on Netflix right now to go along with that. And you might be able to buy that now that it's been released. I'm not, not sure on that those details. Also several Winnie the Pooh classics that are in chapter book form that are great because of Lynn Dixie. That's another great one. We've also, through the years, worked in a lot of historical nonfiction, and both of my older boys love reading historical nonfiction now. Wall series, there's the classic Wizard of Oz books. Those are fun because there's differences in those, and of course the classic movie, Black Beauty, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Rebecca of Sunny Book Brook Farm. We've also read through several of the classic Jack London novels, such as The Call of the Wild and White Fang. There are hard things that you talk through whenever you read through those books but then again that's part of our learning style is reading is reading together and then having a lot of deep conversation that sparks from that. There's also Peter Pan. The Cricket in Times Square is another good one. And so another thing that I have done through the years is if you just request the Sunlight, it's a homeschool curriculum company that's very literature based. If you request their catalog, the catalog comes for free. And of course, when you buy their packages, you get the full curriculum set. But I've always used their book list as well. And whether I get those exact books or not, I've had times where I take their exact book list and I'll order several of those books in advance from my library and have them sitting there waiting for me to pick up. Or I just know when I'm out at a used book fair, at a homeschool curriculum sale, if I see certain books, I'll know, okay, I saw that on a Sunlight list. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Also, my personal rule is if it's a Newbery Honorable Mention or, or a Newbery Award winner, I pick those up as well. Also, the Encyclopedia Brown series, the Judy Bloom book. And so I'll stop there. At least I don't. And I go on naming books on all day long. But if you go over to largefamilytable.com, look for my Becoming a Homeschool Read Aloud Mama post. I'll have a lot of good books linked for you there, plus links to other resources online that you might find helpful in your Read Aloud journey. Be sure to look into Spanish for you as well if you are looking for some affordable, gentle language curriculum for your homeschool. And I've got a bunch of updates and stuff. Be on the lookout tomorrow. Tomorrow I will have uh, an update video and then this kind of not necessarily a week in a life. It's going to be several weeks in a life, but I have it pared down to only about 20 minutes or so so I can work on getting caught up over here because, uh, you know, stuff's happening. So I'll see you next time with another brand new video and be sure let's talk about read alouds in those comments below. Bye-bye.